One of the biggest challenges that you as a caregiver can face is when your loved one's behavior starts changing. When this happens, it's very important to know why. Maybe it could be due to a change in medication, or perhaps a deficiency in your loved one's nutrition, or maybe even a urinary tract infection. Yes, many people don't know that a urinary tract infection can trigger confusion, agitation, and depression, just like more serious sounding conditions. But before you jump to conclusions about what causes behavioral changes in your loved one, it's important to rule out other possible underlying conditions, each of which requires specific treatments. If you suspect your loved one may have Alzheimer's or another memory disorder, you both need to understand what you're dealing with right away. The sooner your loved one is tested comprehensively and diagnosed, the easier it will be to manage the symptoms. How can you tell if your loved one has mild to moderate memory loss? He or she may have problems finding the proper words to say, may lose focus and attention, may be disoriented, and may have problems following directions or performing tasks that used to be easy. With more advanced dementia, your loved one may lose his or her social abilities, may start to wander, may exhibit inappropriate behavior, and may experience hallucinations. Remember that not all of these symptoms occur with everyone who has dementia, but they're all possible, and they can lead to frustration and depression for you as well as for your loved one. And also, above all, remember that your loved one's behavioral changes are not his or her fault, and that getting angry or frustrated won't help matters. Instead, approach the difficult behaviors with gentleness and patience. Uncle Jimmy, would you like a sweet? Yes, I would. Make sure that your loved one is in the calmest environment possible, that he or she is getting adequate nutrition and enough water to drink, and some form of exercise. I ended up there. We have the Chattanooga the choosing chairs. Jimmy, this TV is a little loud. I'm going to turn it down, okay? If there are loud noises or voices, if there is too little or too much light, or if the room is too hot or too cold, either correct these things or move your loved one away from them. Lack of sleep or rest can also make your loved one irritable and hard to manage. And although you want him or her to have plenty of stimulating activities, too much stimulation can cause irritability. Hey Jimmy, yes. can you go over to the fridge and get me the butter and put it on the table please? Where's the fridge? Right here. If your loved one is helping with household tasks, right don't give elaborate instructions. Yeah. Just start with the refrigerator. Go over here. Explain simply and have him or her do one task at a time. As another way of simplifying things, when you're laying out clothes for your loved one, lay them out in the order that he or she will be putting them on. Some people with dementia experience more intense behavioral changes in the late afternoon or evening. This phenomenon is called sundowning. We don't know exactly why it occurs, but it seems linked to fatigue or changes in the light and shadows which come toward the end of the day. Best coping strategies for sundowning are limit your loved one's caffeinated beverages, give him or her plenty of sunshine and activity during the day, put the lights on in the early evening, make afternoon to evening transitions smooth, and offer your loved one a bedtime snack. Some people with dementia who are disoriented may resort to wandering. Wandering may be related to repeating a former routine or to the need to find something that's lost. If your loved one is restless, bored, or in an unpleasant situation, he or she may have the urge to get up and go. Jimmy, where are you going? I'm going to the restaurant. I'm going to work. To cope with wandering, create a safe place where your loved one can wander, like a special room or an enclosed yard. Label the rooms in your house so that they can easily be identified and put visual cues and comforting items there so your loved one feels at ease. Alarms and locks can warn you if your loved one tries to wander away and there are tracking systems in case he or she does. The Alzheimer's Association has an ID jewelry program called Safe Return.
It's part of a live 24-hour immediate response service that uses special bracelets to track wanderers. Validation and redirection are two special strategies professionals use in dealing with dementia clients, and you can use these too. Validation therapy is based on the work of Naomi Feil, a social worker who developed successful ways to communicate with older clients. What you got there, Jimmy? Just a bunch of banana peels. I need to keep these. These are mine. I know things are important. Things are special to me too, okay? But why don't we do this? Why don't we put them in a special can that I've got, and that way they'll be safe, okay? Put them in here, and then if, if they get really full with the other ones you get, then we'll um, put them in a bigger, safer can downstairs. Put them in there. Thank you. Great. Okay? So I'll keep take care of them for you for safekeeping, okay? Okay. Okay. Redirection goes hand in hand with validation. It's another way to diffuse a tense situation with acceptance and dignity and without arguing. Jimmy, since when do you work at the restaurant? Do you I still think, work there? I think so. You had, so. you had such a cool job. I can't believe you were there 50 years. 50 years. 50 years. That's a lifetime. Yeah, that is. Um, I've got to run some errands. Why don't I drive you to work? That'd be okay? We've got to do a couple other things first. Okay. All right? And then you can tell me some more stories about the restaurant. All right? Okay. Let's go. If your loved one's dementia is further along, you won't be able to appeal to his or her intellect, and communication of any sort will be more challenging. In spite of that, however, you want to stay positive, use eye contact, and keep that gentle touch. Make your loved one feel that he or she is being heard, whether sense is being made or not. By using patience and employing validation and redirection strategies when needed, you'll make shared time with your loved one not only easier, but more dignified and memorable.